ladies, and welcome to The Beauty Shaman. So today I am so excited to to interview and introduce all of you to a good friend of mine who's absolutely fabulous. I'm going to have on this channel much more so you all can get to know her. Her name is Julie Palaev. She is from Just Jules Nutrition. She's a board certified holistic health coach, two time author, three time boy mom, and certified yoga teacher. And we are going to talk about health. And today we're going to talk about menopause and diet for menopause. So thank you so much, Jules, for joining me today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Suzanne. I love you. Thanks for having me. I love you too. And I'm excited for everybody in the audience to get to know you because you bring such a wonderful grounded approach to all of this, to nutrition and health, because you also bring in some spiritual aspects of self-care. And I just, I love all of that. I think that's so important as we get older to really, um, really learn how to take care of ourselves in a way that's very honoring. <clears throat> and I feel like you do that in spades. Like you're just great at it. Mm, thank you. Thank you. You know, it's a lifelong uh, journey. I feel like for many of us, by the time we reach menopause, which uh, newsflash, I, I am a menopausal woman now. I have a <laughs> this, this is menopause, ladies. Yeah, yeah there you go. I know we Not all know as it, man. daunting and scary as I would have thought. So yes. yeah. yeah, there's that. Well, it just depends, I think, on the individual. I think many women in the audience have had a terrible time with it. And other women, it's like it just sort of flies past and you don't know what happened. Um, I was very disgruntled that I gained 25 pounds with menopause, like overnight. And, and I know that's not what's happening to you, but you know, that's, that freaked me out. I mean, I was like, what, all of a sudden, you know, many women have gone through that. So I think that's why today's discussion is very relevant. Um, we're going to talk about the best diet for menopausal women and postmenopausal women. Um, so, so maybe you could just speak to how our bodies change. Like, what is it? Like, why, why do some people like me have such a hard time and other people don't? Well, yeah. And I was going to say, you know, it's, I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I've been living these principles for 15 years. Yeah. And I actually was someone who started early signs of perimenopause be, when I was 38, actually. And I would say that I'm a little bit of a freak of nature um, in that, you know, my mom went through early menopause. And so I expected that. But um, while I was perimenopausal, I actually then got pregnant. Right. So um, another news flash, right? <laughs> we <laughs> are still extremely fertile and, um, and then went on to breastfeed for two years and then went into menopause. So I'm not your like average menopausal woman. And I will say that I think that it has been an easier transition for me because I've been practicing these principles of healthy diet, healthy lifestyle, yoga, meditation, spiritual alignment for well over 15 years, right? That's been my path. And so I think that this can be a much easier transition with the right tools. Well, for those of us who didn't practice all of those things up until, you know, menopause hit, what are some of the, let's talk about like, okay, what now? Like, all right, how do we begin to stabilize our hormones? How do we begin to um, live differently? What does that look like? Right, right. So the first thing is to recognize, right, that this right. is a hormonal change happening in your body. And I think from, you know, a lot of people understand sort of your um, traditional warning signs and symptoms of hormone disruption, whether that's, um, you know, skipping a period or PMS or having hot flashes. Right. And then there are all these other sort of sneaky signs and symptoms. And for me, that showed up as um, anxiety and, um, and uh, digestive upset. And you talked about weight gain, you know, this all, all of a sudden overnight, just sort of ballooning up and feeling like, what is this? You know, like yeah. I didn't eat enough food. For Oops, everything. Pounds. Right, yeah, right. yeah. So those are, you know, really telltale signs that hormones are at play. And there's a, a lot of reasons why we have these disruptions now. And a lot comes down to food, which I know we're going to talk about. A lot is environment. And I know you talk about skincare and body care, getting all those disruptors out of your system is key. Alcohol is another huge disruptor. I'm sorry, ladies, but that is not doing you any favors. And I, I love a glass of wine occasionally, but not on the regular, no way, no how. So alcohol is a huge disruptor. Sugar, we know is a huge, huge hormone disruptor. And that's something, those two right there are big things to pay attention to because you asked about what happens when our hormones um, shift you know, it's, it's all the female hormones that shift in menopause, but the other ones that we have really 
um, a powerful control, we can take control over are insulin and cortisol. And those continue, those hormones continue to be big factors when we're in menopause. And we can, we can shift those very easily by looking at diet, looking at this, these disruptors and looking at uh, lifestyle changes. So I think half the audience did a little spit up, you know, when you were talking about <laughs> wine and sugar, it's like, no, um, <laughs> yes, I, I agree. And I think the wine, the wine is my big killer. I love a glass of wine at night and I, I will, we'll get more to that. And some of the other things we were talking because we're talking about um, how to how to change that. Right. So that's one of my big killers, but anyway, I, I, I appreciate you saying it, but I know everybody spit up a little bit. Um, so let's <laughs> like, no, please don't take my mind. Um, so let's get okay. into, so we have to sort of change our diet. So taking out wine, take not taking out, we're not going to take it out completely because that's deprivation mode, but you know, we're going to modify it, but now let's hit on, we're going to get into diet, but I want to talk about what about things like vegetarian paleo and, you know, some of these diets, I have swear to God, tried every single one of them because I'm I'm an experimenter. I'm always trying new things um, I'm with very limited success. So, so let's get into that a little bit. Well, and I want to just mention too, that it's, it's really about adding in. And so oh. we can talk about different diets and we can talk about what, you know, you've been successful with and what I've been successful with. But the truth is, is there is no one size fits all approach and every single body is different, but there are a few key things that you can add in and start doing easily. Most of my clients I've seen lately, they're all moving towards a plant-based diet. And, and I think that, you know, like attracts like, so that's, you know, these people are coming to me because they're wanting to get away from all the heavy meats that they've been, they've been experimenting with on the paleo diet. Paleo's had a great run. It's been a great, you know, but the, but the truth of the matter is, is like, if you go back to our ancestors and like eating whole foods that exist in nature, like that's where it's at. And it is about adding in certain natural foods and natural practices to support that bio individuality. So diet and adding in, I, I know we both have gigantic glasses of warm lemon water, warm <laughs> lemon water. Again, these yeah. are the things that you can add in. This is a great detoxifier for your liver. It supports inflammation. It's good. It's high in vitamin C, but the liver is a really central organ for hormones. And, and if you are having these hormonal ups and downs, you have to make sure that you're also detoxing on a regular basis. So lemon water is key. Your dark leafy greens are key, you know, healthy fats like avocado and flax seeds and pumpkin seeds, you know, a, a small amount of protein, moderate protein. I, I say small, but I mean moderate amount of protein. You know, I think that menopausal women get into this trap thinking I need more protein because I'm going to lose muscle mass. Actually, it's not, it's not the, you, you are going to, you know, protein is going to give you the, the building blocks for muscle, but there's more to it than just, you know, pounding more animal protein, um, which is, is, which is, you know, actually fasting. Fasting is one of those other things that I know we're going to talk about, but on another video, but that is again, one of those things that can really help set you up for success as you go through this part of life, which actually is quite beautiful. It's like a whole rebirth. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I absolutely agree with that. Um, so let's talk. So putting, so you're talking about more plant than protein. So um, I just got to tell you a quick story here. My housemate has been going on a diet and trying to lose some weight. Her daughter's getting married. She wants to fit it, you know, look really good. Um, and I love smoothies and I do a lot of smoothies. So like protein smoothies, put a little protein powder. I do yeah. a lot of kale. I love cilantro. I've got a cilantro that is some ginger and I do my little smoothie. And when I make it, then I'm drinking it and she is mortified. <laughs> Like, oh my God, that smells terrible. That looks terrible. And I thought, wow, I guess, I guess when I first started doing it, it was terrible too, right? I thought this is nasty, but once you sort of get into it and maybe you sweeten it up a little bit with some juice or something, but anyway, it's actually really yummy. So I yeah. think some of these transitions are just, you just kind of got to get used to it, but let's talk about integrating more plants into your diet and what that looks like. Yeah. You know, I was actually going to share with you a new smoothie of mine. It's, oh, it's one I created, it's called the hormone balancer oh, nice. and it's got a great, um, balance of all the things I talked about. 
So a um, little bit of, you know, moderate protein, some healthy fat, you're getting your antioxidants from a little bit of low glycemic fruit, your dark leafy greens, like you mentioned the kale. Kale is kind of um, an advanced green, Suzanne. So I know that you've been on this path a while for those beginners out there. If just start, and this is what I did, you know, this is what you can do with your kids. And if you're one of those advanced people and you're making smoothies for other people, just a little bit of spinach. Right. So my recipes typically will call for two cups, like, you know, we stuff the greens in there, but just start easy. Right. So even just a little handful of spinach, you're not going to taste it, especially if you put a really good nut butter or an avocado in there. Um, you know, a little bit of sweet, a little uh, a sweet fruit will disguise that a little bit of stevia will disguise the green. But, um, you know, again, you just want to make these little incremental changes, right? So just a little bit of spinach to start. If you see the recipe and you're like, what? If you want to swap it out for kale, you go for it because you're more advanced, but kale is going to be extremely flavorful where spinach, you're not going to taste it that much. So that's like actually one of the easiest ways to get onto this path of eating more plants is just to add a green smoothie in, a green juice, you know, a big raw salad. I like to do a big rainbow salad every single day. And I'm talking like, you know, big, right? Because that's my main meal. But for yeah. other people, just add a raw salad to what you're already doing. And that's a way to just start to add in more of those veggies. And steaming is good too, right? Because sometimes I notice if I try to eat kale at night, I can't, my mm -hmm. stomach is just, I'm up, like I'm awake because my, I can't digest it. If I eat it during the day in a smoothie, it's okay. So sometimes I think because digestion becomes more of an issue, right? It's like, we got to find ways to integrate some of these vegetables into our diet in a way that's okay, right? That we can manage. Right. Yeah. There are certain vegetables that I steer totally clear from. Like I cannot tolerate cauliflower cooked anyway. I can't either smoothie. at all. It just it doesn't work. Yeah. But yes, yeah, steaming your kale. Sometimes people will steam kale or even steam beets before they put them in their smoothie. Again, those are pretty advanced, but you know what I do for my kale salads. And this is a good tip is that you want to, um, it, you know, Kale is, is high in cellulose, right? So it's a really tough, dark leafy green. So when you chop it up, you actually want to like almost shave it. So you like make it almost like shredded kale, mm. like shredded cabbage. And actually the two go together really well. And then you put your olive oil and your lemon juice, your Himalayan sea salt on it, massage it with your hands, and then let it sit for like half hour, at least longer, better. Cause then it gets even softer. It's sort of like you know, veggie ceviche, it marinates and it cooks it in a way. And that's going to make it more digestible. And that's like one of my favorite meals that we just described there. And then you yeah. just eat it like that. You just eat it raw like that once it's massaged. That I can eat, I can tolerate it that way. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I've, I've had that in restaurants. I've not actually tried that. So yeah. that's a, that's a cool thing. Now, how many, how many, like, if we can kind of parse this out a little bit, like how many fruits, how many vegetables, like what, not many, or maybe cups or whatever, should we kind of look at as an overview here? Well, you know, it's interesting because I don't, I, I like to teach people to intuitively eat and mm. we need guidelines, right? So there's a couple ways to start thinking about this. And it is, again, just adding in, right? So if your traditional breakfast has been bacon and eggs or an egg sandwich, I mean, I had this visceral, I think I must've been detoxing because I had this memory of this egg sandwich that I used to eat from a place in town. It was this rosemary bread. And I, I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I haven't thought about that in the longest time, but our, our body stores these memories and the food in some way, shape or form. But if that is your traditional breakfast, like swap that out for a green smoothie, you're winning the day. If you already got the green smoothie, think about what your, your, your typical lunch is, right? And I don't know, maybe that's a sandwich that you get at the local shop. Instead of that sandwich, maybe you're going to swap that out for half a sandwich with a big salad, right? So you're just making these bit, little incremental, in, in, incremental changes. Dinner, same thing. If you're used to having, you know, like potatoes and um, steak um, and, you know, this little wimpy side of broccoli like they serve at the steakhouse, then <laughs> think of swapping that little bit of broccoli for the meat, Right? So you're just slowly decreasing the amount of meat that you normally consume and then fill the rest of your plate with all sorts of different veggies. And those can be steamed, you know, they can be in that big raw salad, they can be blended up in soups. Sometimes we like to, you know, put them into our dips. Um, you know, it's, it's about getting inventive and getting creative and also just experimenting with something new. 
right? Right. right. I think that's great. And I think the idea, it seems like is to really get more just plants being your number one, protein being your number two and carbohydrates really, you know, really small, like as far as like grains and potatoes and things like that. Is that what you mean as well? Yeah. You know, grains are really individualized. A lot of people don't really tolerate grains that well. Um, I love sweet potatoes. I love butternut squash. I love spaghetti squash. You know, again, if you're coming from, you know, fried foods, um, you know, a, a yellow or red potato has its place, but then you start working your way more to the colorful veggies. And I want to talk about fruit because I think so many people are fruit phobic and we think we've got to, you know, stay away from the sugar, the carbohydrates. And right now in, you know, where we live, it's, it's fruit season. Fruit is coming into season and it's so good. I don't know if you've had the nectarines and the peaches. Oh yeah, I got them. Yeah, they're great. Grapes. You know, this is food that was given to us by nature, right? Mm -hmm. Like by like we want to eat these foods in season and not be afraid of them. When you eat fruit, however, you want to just make sure that you do it on an empty stomach. And that's what's really key is like you want to get the most out of the food and then you want to be able to that you want to eat it in a way that the food can um, also be digested and eliminated in a very easy way. That's great. That's great advice. I do think there is a bit of a fruit phobia, you know, we're going to close up here, but I, I've, you know, I worked with a a trainer, a personal trainer for a very short time. And she just said, you know, no fruit, no fruit adults, too much sugar. You know, you can only have like, you know, one, one, um, like blueberry or so, yeah, I don't know what it was. It was a little extreme. And I thought, well, that just seems extreme to me. I get the sugar thing. So, so I appreciate you bringing that up. And I do think sugar in its place and eaten correctly is actually really phenomenal for you. Right. Natural fruit sugar eaten, yeah. like the, the things that are causing heart disease and that are killing us is not fruit people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it's the, you know, quadruple mocha latte and you. all the convenience foods and the processed foods right. and um, the industrial seed oils, right? You want to l- really read your labels and get that stuff out of your diet. There's no reason to be afraid of fruit, in my opinion, if you're really diligent with all that other stuff. I love it. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Jules. On, you know, I mean, we've definitely just sort of skimmed the surface, but I think it's a lot of great ideas for women to take and just start implementing. And how can people get a hold of you, Jules, if they want more information? Yeah. So you can go to my website, justjulesnutrition.com. I'm also getting more active on Instagram and that's at Julie Poliath and that's J-U-L-I-E-P-E-L-A-E-Z. Um, and they can follow me there. Okay. Awesome. And ladies, if you are interested in more information, please get in contact with Jules. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, Very inspirational and has a great way about dealing with diet and hormones and that sort of thing. All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today. And thank you, Jules, for joining us on the beauty shaman. We will um, be having more of these kind of very constructive conversations for all of you. All right. Thank you so much for watching the beauty shaman.